Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Brian from Apex Detail. This here has been a long time coming. I get to correct my C7 and protect it. I'm going to take you along for the ride because this has already been corrected, and I want to show you how to attack a car that's already been corrected. It's going to be quite different. You have to be very careful with it. Telltale signs right here. Corners of the emblems shaved right off. No care in the world. All the corners packed with polish, buffer trails here and there, and many other uh, pieces of evidence that this has been touched before. So again, I'm going to take you along for the ride. Let's get started by removing some unwanted emblems, just like this one here. On the driver's side, I already have that done. Gives you a nice clean look. I'll show you how to do it. We're going to cover many things during the correction process here. Grab a heat gun, run it over the emblem back and forth. Never hover in one area. You're going to heat up the paint, blister it, going to be too late then. Get it hot enough that the back of your hand feels very warm, then you are good to go. The adhesive has softened up and you can grab a strong fishing line. I personally use 30 pound fishing line, wrap it around my fingers, get in behind the emblem, but stay away from the paint. Have a bulk of the weight or the pressure as you're going back and forth with your hand up against the back of the emblem. Yeah, that's going to leave a lot of adhesive behind, but I'd rather have that than running the fishing line back and forth on your paint. Hope that makes sense. What I want to show you here, if you get bound up or the adhesive feels like it's getting hard, just stop. Stop right there, grab the heat gun, run it back and forth again. Don't force the issue. Notice the distance that the heat gun is away from the panel and the motion that I'm making. It's warm enough now so I can continue on and you'll see the emblem gracefully fall to the floor. So instead of repeatedly dousing the panel with harsh chemicals to remove the adhesive, I'll just grab the 3M wheel. The ticket with that is keeping the RPM low and keeping that moving back and forth so you don't build up heat in one little tiny area on the panel. That's where you will ruin the paint. You'll notice the speed's not cranked up to the highest speed setting. I'm not just hovering and putting tons of pressure over one area. I'm just trying to get, grab the edge of the adhesive and peel it back with my 3M wheel. Obviously, the wheel is driven by a drill, and you can see where my left hand is. Not only cradling the drill and guiding it back and forth, but also protecting the drill from the panel as it's just the back of my hand rubbing up the, against the paint instead of the plastic from the drill casing. That should just about do it. Wipe off the residue, and there's always a piece or two that you have left behind. You've got to pick up the 3M wheel and finish it off, but it won't take long. From here, you do need to use some type of chemical to remove the, the adhesive residue, and for that, it's going to be Citral 266. Spray it right into a nice, soft microfiber towel and finish off that adhesive. And that's all that's to it. We have a nice, clean look. That's what I'm looking for. Speaking of looking, let's take a quick peek at the panel we're going to start from. From top to bottom, you can see all the imperfections up here, and there are many, from scratches to rub marks to swirls and etching and staining. And, of course, there you can see the telltale signs of that reckless detailer that had their mitts on it before I got it. We'll take care of that. Talk about protection. Well, I like to use 3M, and it's usually the 3M Precision. That's this lime green color. This is hard to find, also very expensive. A nice alternate is this automotive tape from 3M. It is uh, a little bit of a darker green color. It does have some elasticity to it, so you can bend it around corners and does work very well. It's just not low profile like the 3M Precision. Also grab yourself some of the pinstriping tape as well. I'll show you where to use that.
As you saw there, the wheels and tires, they're cleaned up and they're not going to get involved with the situation. So I cover them up with Harbor Freight. I believe they were under $11 for the set of four. Let's get to the protection of all the trim. And that will include all of the carbon flash painted trim. And there are five or six pieces on this vet that, by the way, we're going to match up with a carbon fiber flash splitter, side skirts. Um, we're also going to put uh, diffusers on the back and also a ducktail uh, spoiler. We're not taping to paint the car, so you don't have to be absolutely perfect. You can get this done in a timely manner. I'd rather actually have some on the corner of the paint than having some of the trim exposed. As you can see here, this 3M works nice. It's pliable. You can bend it around corners. Continue to protect the trim from top to bottom all the way around the car. The extra time you take to do this is well worth it compared to damaging a piece of trim either on a customer's car or your own. And that's all there is to it. We are ready for correct. Well, almost ready for correction. There's one little item I do need to take care of. Although we do offer PPF here on my personal cars, I do not like it. I love paint. I don't like covering paint, even though of the protection that PPF provides. I don't like covering paint that I spend tons of time correcting on my vehicles. I'd rather just coat it and deal with nicks and scratches as they come. So to remove that, it's sort of similar to an emblem. You want to use the heat gun and you want to keep it in motion back far enough away from the panel that you don't do damage. You just want to soften up the adhesive for that PPF just enough to peel it back and start to take it away from the car very carefully. Notice the angle that I'm slowly taking it away from the car, and slowly is the key word. Do not force it. If it's starting to really pull and you have to have a second hand on there, stop, grab the heat gun, and go over it again.
With the film removed, there's some adhesive to get off, and here's another thing I use, the Pro Strength Goof Off. Besides Citral 266, this is another go-to for me. Just give, put a little bit on the towel and dab it on the area, let it sit for a few seconds, put a little bit more on the towel, and it will wipe right off. Very effective. One thing I do want to mention as we come up to the roof and all of these little areas now that we're going to go after, the peaks, the corners, the edges. If you're correcting your car for the first time and you're worried about these, buffing through these, there's an easy way to protect them. Just grab the thin pinstriping tape from 3M and lay it down right on the edge on the corner of that contour or body line or whatever, whatever it is you want to protect. Believe me, it's well worth the little bit of extra time to lay this down then it is to take it to a body shop, have them sand it all the way down, repaint it, and then get out your checkbook. One thing I'm going to do that the previous detailer could have done before using 33 ounces of compound on this car is laying a thin strip of that masking tape right in the seam between the target top and the junction where it meets the roof. That'll save you a little bit of cleaning time. I did mention we're going to do things differently with this car because it's been detailed before. I would normally grab the Lake Country Hybrid Blue Wool Pad and 3D ACA 500. Instead, the Low Lint Lambs Wool Pad from Lake Country and 3D1. And instead of spot correcting with 3000 grit before I start the cutting like I would normally do, we're going to do the cutting first and then see what's left behind and play it by ear. Because again, we want to preserve what little clear coat they, that could be left on this car before building back up with a heavy duty ceramic coating. So let me do the cutting with this 3D1, which would normally take me a really long time compared to uh, the ACA 500 and the hybrid pads, either the purple or the blue. They are great for cutting. You're going to be quite surprised what 3D1 teamed up with this pad can do on the hard, stubborn GM Clear. Instead of having 12 or 13 horrible imperfections left over after the cutting phase to go after with wet sanding, we'll probably be down to about 3 or 4, which is no problem. Very impressive just from a one step. It has a nice bite when it comes to cut right out of the gate, but breaks down quickly so you can finish down. And we will have to finish up with a very fine abrasive, but that won't remove hardly any clear coat, anything measurable anyway. Uh, so this will end up being a two-step. It will be cutting with this. And then if we need to spot correct with three or four or 5,000 grit, we're gonna do that where needed, but that could be polished out then with a very fine abrasive uh, just uh, a finishing polish and a very soft foam pad will do.
that's going to do it. Two passes, crisscross pattern. You didn't hear the polisher scream, and I only had it on the third speed setting, just guiding it back and forth, hardly any pressure. No heat was built up on the panel. So let's remove the residue. Let's see what's left. I showed you a few times how many ugly marks were up here and we're down to just three or four little areas that we can correct using three to 5,000 grit uh, Trizac disc. You can also use uh, a block, a sanding block, KXK, with uh, some wet sanding sheets, but I like Trizac discs to each their own. But that's going to do it for today's video, guys. If you're enjoying the content, like, subscribe, share the content, hit that notification bell. That'll let you know when we have new content. This series will continue.